Hi and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to troubleshoot USB device issues. I'm going to try and cover as many things as I can in uh, this short video. So let's uh, get started. So the first thing I would say to do is make sure everything's plugged in first of all on the back. Make sure they're all plugged in okay. If you've got anything that's, if you've got loads of hubs and stuff like that, unplug everything and just plug in, leave plugged in the mouse and the keyboard. Reboot the system and see and then plug in one device and see if it gets recognized if it does then it's obviously a power issue you may have uh, using too much power consumption on the actual USB ports so let's have a little look at the Orbeer I'm on Windows 7 this will work for Windows XP and Vista and Windows 7 so what we're going to do is type um, systemd and uh, .cpl okay like so this will then bring up this window, click on here and this opens up our little window sorry my mouse spazzed out there for some reason okay so now we've got this window open we want to go to hardware and device manager now once we get into here we're looking for these little exclamation marks you see can you see these? now it's on the sound card there I know it's on that sound card but we'll be looking for on the U uh, universal serial bus controllers so if you've got anything down here then you've got issues okay if you've got a red cross there then it's been disabled you can right click and enable that disabled enable okay we can come up the top here and do it from up here okay so what we need to do is just hide this uh, sound thing here come down to the USB hub area I'm going to right click and go properties now what was I talking about earlier which was the power so you can come into the power tab here and look for the amount of power that's being used okay so as you can see we're getting uh, a device here that's being used for 70 MA I can have up to 500 MA per port so each port what people tend to do which I've seen quite a lot of if they've got uh, hubs that are outside of the um, case that have got no power to them and they plug loads of stuff into that and then they plug it into one port and that causes a lot of problems because obviously power consumption uh, is critical to USB devices and what I'd advise you to do is get yourself a power unit that's got its own power device to that USB hub and that will solve a lot of your problems okay I've got one of them here to show you this is a, a power hub what I'm on about this comes with its own power adapter okay something like this okay and uh, there's a there's a ton of these on here you can have a little look at it's got a good little uh, array of uh, USB hubs that have got their own power units to them okay so let's move on so let's move on to the next bit so this is important look inside here for the power consumption okay I'm going to move to the driver area and look in the driver area here make sure that you've got the right driver for that device now if you've just bought the device and you've plugged it in and it doesn't work um, you've obviously got to put the driver on it now sometimes dry Windows will try and put its own driver on there or maybe you've got a generic item that you've bought from say eBay or something like that from China that doesn't be isn't recognized on there what you need to do is make sure that you put the dr uh, device driver on take the unit out and put the device driver in first okay install that first then plug the actual unit in and then you should be okay okay so that's a common area what they tend to do is plug the device in and then put the software on straight after that it don't work you'd have to if you've done that you'll need to go to add and remove programs remove the software and then do it that way okay if you've already installed the actual driver there may be a problem with that driver that you've installed what you can do is click on rollback now mine's greyed out here but yours won't be so what you need to do is click on that and roll back to the previous driver okay another way to do it as well is also use the uninstall button what we can do is uninstall all these devices you can either right click and uninstall or go to properties and click on the uninstall on the actual driver area okay whatever floats your boat okay this is another area here allow the computer to turn off the device to save power there's a tick in there so this is only if you're having problems from my mind you so what we need to do now is uninstall these so right click and uninstall I'm not going to bother doing that once you've uninstalled them some people I say I hear you say just reboot the system and they will be put back yes they will 
but if there's a problem with it it might not solve your problem if it does solve your problem happy days you're good to go but obviously if it doesn't and you've still got problems what you need to do is go to the manufacturer's website now we're just going to assume that this motherboard on this system is a ASUS motherboard once you get to the main website for your location mine's UK yours will be USA or wherever you're living you need to come up to services and come support okay this is the same for every single motherboard manufacturer that they do you can get drivers from there okay so you need to come to support and then you go to downloads once you get here you need to put your product that you're looking for okay which will be motherboard and then obviously the series that you've got okay whether it's a 775 socket or whatever now if you don't know this information or you haven't got the book or the manual you can use programs like PC Wizard to tell you what socket it is or what motherboard type it is it will say Asus, uh, Asus motherboard or MSI or something like that with the socket okay and then you can come on here and do that so let's just assume it's that and then you look for your brand or your say it's a P5B Deluxe say you go there then search okay select an operating system it's then asking you to select an operating system we want Windows 7 click search it then comes up with a load of stuff here okay this is where you want to get your chipset drivers okay download these and install these these fix a lot of USB issues as well because obviously the USB devices on the board are to do with this um, software here okay so you need to download it okay so now we've done that you now to the actual uh, get the chipset drivers for that board and if you have got um, a lot of problems here yellow where they haven't been installed that's where you can download all your drivers from okay so let's have a little look at something else so there's a system restore we can do as well what you can do is go to system restore and try to roll back and see if that fixes your problem another thing to bear in mind if you have got which is a bit hold out nowadays this was back in the day uh, XP and before that uh, cables too long if you've got a USB device that's too long okay uh, if it's over five meters long it's not going to work very well what you need to do is get yourself a powered hub in between and then carry it on to the next computer if that's what you want to do okay so that's important especially in offices and stuff like that the next thing you want to take care of is the USB version 2.0 or 1.1 now if you've got 2.0 you're okay if you've got 1.1 say you format the machine and your old XP machines got a version of Windows with no service pack on it it's gonna have version 1.1 on it now um, version 2.0 is backward compatible with uh, with 1.1 to 1.1 but 1.1 will not work with USB devices that are 2.0 so for instance if you've got a USB device that is a version 2.0 it won't work okay so you'll need to install service pack 1 minimum or service pack 2 or service pack 3 or whatever okay to get that device to work properly that's another issue that sometimes happens when people format their machines okay so another thing we can do is go to event viewer so event uh, view if you look in event viewer here you can see it now we're going to click on that and uh, once we get into here we want to look into uh, windows logs okay click in there and then come down to system double click on that and this will open up this window we can now come down and start to look for any errors now obviously I haven't got problems with mine but yours may have errors like this okay so that's what you do double click on this this opens up another box and then you can start seeing where the problems are or what's actually causing the problem you can always check there okay let me just check the time oh we've got okay one last thing if you've got um, a custom built computer and you've not used the front of the USB ports before and now you're using them and they don't work maybe the guy that built the machine hasn't plugged them into the motherboard so you may need to check that okay I think that's all we've got time for in this video uh, my name is Brian from brightech.co.uk hope you enjoy these videos if you do please hit the subscribe button show your support and uh, thanks guys for all your support on the uh, forums there thanks very much for watching bye for now